Yeah, it's crazy because because we think about space as as a silent place. Like um, we don't think of space as having anything to hear. Well, in a sense, that's accurate because the medium of space itself is a vacuum and, you know, obviously sound can't travel in a vacuum, but it's the fact that uh, radio waves can travel through the vacuum of space and then be detected using the same types of radio receivers and antennas that our listeners are, are using to detect our voices. That's where the magic is really happening here. Because, you know, scaling up those antennas and changing the frequency of those receivers makes it possible for us to detect not just radio waves made by us here on Earth, but celestial radio waves made by the Sun or Jupiter or a pulsar or any other astrophysical phenomena. So what if you're just like, out there in space, right? Like, what is that empty sound? Like, that empty space sound like? Well, the sound of space itself sounds a bit like an undifferentiated hissing noise. Just like a... Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and, and it's not until you're actually, you know, listening to a particular object. So different objects sound like different things. Um, Jupiter sounds like ocean waves breaking up on a beach if it's long waves of radiation. People just being thrown onto a tin roof if it's short waves of radiation. The sun sounds a little bit like the sea, kind of roaring. A pulsar, for instance, which is a pulsating radio star, sounds like a drum beat. The faster the pulsar is spinning, the faster the beat. You become quite attuned to being able to detect what it is that you're listening to just by the sounds. It's through listening that we've come to uncover some of the universe's most important secrets. Its scale, what it's made of, and even how old it is. This is what the sun sounds like. Jupiter. This is a highly condensed clump of neutral matter spinning in the distant universe. When you hear those sounds, what are they telling us? So one of the practices of turning a non-audible phenomena into sound is trying to work out if there's something that we can hear in the data that we can't see. And sometimes ears can be incredibly effective detectors of patterns in a way that perhaps our eyes, because we use them so much more, are not as effective at. So I suppose that's the scientific answer. And then the human or artistic answer is that there's something quite emotionally fulfilling about being able to connect with something as distant and, and therefore quite abstract as a star through the emotional mechanism of, of listening.